What's the difference between a good and a great photo? Now that's a very common question and one that can usually have a rather ambiguous answer. In this video, I'm gonna try and answer that in a very clear, concise, and actionable way, but please keep in mind that this is simply my opinion and not fact. This video is also sponsored by Surfshark, but more on them later on. A good photo can be summarized as a photo that technically works. By that, I mean it's properly exposed, it's in focus, the composition is good, there's a nice subject, the colors are good. Generally speaking, all of these technical items are in check. All you need to do is get all of these elements in one shot, and in most cases, you will have a good photo. You can also say that a good photo will have all your questions answered. By that, I mean when you look at the image, it's obvious what's going on and you don't have any more questions or any more thoughts about the image. Now let's have a quick look at some examples. So this first image is actually here in Valencia and it was taken at the art center. Now, technically, this is a great image. You have strong composition, you have strong light, you have a clear subject, and overall, it's a very pleasing image. However, it doesn't make you ask any more questions. It's obvious what's going on here. They're in a very arty place, good light, and a couple of silhouettes walking through. Moving on, this photo was taken in Porto, and I personally think it's a stronger image. However, everything is very clear. You have an old building, like old part of town, you have strong light coming in, and you just have one single person walking through the patch of light. This image doesn't make you ask any more questions, it doesn't elicit any emotion, it's just a very pleasing light and shadow type of photo. The next photo is from Venice, and similar as with the previous one, we have nice architecture, we have a local that's carrying this little trolley walking through a side lit scene. You can basically figure everything out about this photo just by looking at it. It doesn't leave you with any questions. I mean, someone might wonder what he's carrying, but realistically, no one is gonna sit there and ponder over this image for any longer than a few seconds. It's a very pleasing image, but that's about it. This is another photo that I've taken here in Valencia. This was by the beach. And to be fair, I got lucky with this. There was a pigeon sitting there, flew away, and managed to catch the pigeon in flight. It's cool, don't get me wrong, I like the shadow, I like the light, and overall I think it's a pretty cool image, but it doesn't leave you wondering what else is going on. It's just a pigeon frozen in time with some nice light. There's some nice complementary colours going on here as well, with the yellows and the blues, but apart from that, it's a pretty self-explanatory photo. And the final example is, it's again in Porto, and this was a very nice silhouette. So it's a security guard standing on top of the stairs. What I like about this photo uh, is the composition. You have the leading lines. You also have a lot of complementary colors, your reds, your blues, and a nice strong silhouette. Other than that, there's not much to it. It's just a silhouette in a very nice space with a nice color grade and good composition. I'd like to take a quick moment and thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Surfshark is a VPN. If you're an avid traveler or you like to work from coffee shops or you work remotely, having a VPN, in my opinion, is essential. Because you see, when you arrive at an airport or you arrive in a coffee shop, the Wi-Fi that you connect to, in most cases, will not be secure. What that means is that someone can effectively snoop on what you're doing. And if you're entering any sensitive information, they can pick it up. A VPN encrypts the data going between your device and the internet. Think of it as a, your private little tunnel to the internet, which means that if someone is trying to snoop, they probably won't get very far. A VPN also allows you to change the IP address location. So by that, I mean, if you're, let's say, currently in Spain, you can set your VPN to be back at home in the UK, in the US, etc. And what that means is that any specific content that's not accessible from other countries can now be accessed. So if you want three months of free Surfshark VPN, use code RomanFox and click on the link in the description for more information. A great photo, on the other hand, does not need to have the best color grade or be 100% sharp. As long as you can clearly see what's going on in the frame, a great photo does not need to be as technically polished 
as the good one, because a great photo will have something else going for it that a good photo simply doesn't. And that is to elicit a reaction or an emotion or a feeling from the viewer. So a good example is laughter. How many times have you looked at a photo and just started to giggle to yourself? It could be uh, reliving a previous memory. Sometimes you look at a photo, it could be from a particular location or a particular event, and that specific photo will make you remember back to a time when you have had a similar experience or been in a similar location. You could even have anger or disgust or surprise. Another good way of putting it is that a great photo will leave you with questions. It wouldn't reveal everything about the scene. It'll make you think and it'll make you ask questions. And you'll walk away wanting to find out more, a bit like a cliffhanger in a movie or in a TV series. In order for this to make sense, let's have a quick look at some examples. So this first photo takes us to Madrid. And if I don't tell you what the context of this is, and if you don't actually know what this is, you might be wondering what on earth is going on. Now, this is quite a funny photo because if you start looking at people's reactions, you can almost see every possible reaction in that crowd. And having the sheep at the bottom and the people at the top, I mean, if I didn't know the context, I would be asking loads of questions and I still wouldn't understand why there are so many people next to so many sheep and what is going on here. This is why I think it's a great photo. It's funny and it makes you ask questions. Now this is probably one of my favorite photos. This was over in Margate and basically the tide was starting to come in and the walkway where the people are on obviously gets cut off. So these people mistimed it. Now the kid managed to jump over and then they were basically throwing their dogs over. And if you look at the reactions, if you look at the overall scene, it's just very funny. I remember when we took that photo, because I was with a couple of mates, everyone was laughing. Obviously, these people knew we were taking their photo and they found it funny as well. So the dog in midair, the reaction in the kid's face, and this photo makes you laugh and it ultimately makes you wonder, did the other people make it? Did the dog make it? Uh, short answer is no to both of those questions. Moving on, this photo is from Brighton. And the reason I think this is a great photo is because it just screams seaside in the summer. You can almost picture yourself standing there, you can feel the warmth of the scene. And if you're from the UK and you live near a British seaside, this scene would be very familiar to you. Uh, for me, this photo just reminds me of a warm summer by the beach in the UK. Now, you could argue that it's not as strong as the previous two images, and I do agree with that. However, for me, it just feels warm, and it just reminds me of summer. Next photo is very old, and I've used this photo as an example in previous videos. This is going back to New York in 2019. To be honest with you, at the time, I think this photo was accidental. I definitely didn't plan any of it because back then I just had no idea what I was doing. However, my girlfriend, who's on the left here, I forgot my sides, she was standing and the train was pulling away. And she looked over the train and then the wind caught her hair. You have a bit of motion blur in the train. And lastly, you have a girl sitting in the train staring out. Now, if I didn't tell you that context, you could look at it and think, oh, it could be a still from a movie, or are you just wondering, is that girl hiding from something? Why is she there? What is she looking at? You might say, I'm overthinking, and probably I am. However, to me, I think there is a lot more going on to this image than just a person in the subway. And the final photo is from Istanbul. This is a couple of years ago. This is along the Bosphorus. We went for a walk. And these guys were jumping in with their dogs. However, this particular photo makes you ask questions. Is it cold? Oh, clearly it's cold because that guy's shivering. But then why is the guy on the left covering his ears? Are the dogs going crazy? Is there something else going on? Then you have the two guys who are dressed right at the back, standing and watching. So definitely you know, makes you think that something is going on. So you're just trying to figure out what on earth is going on here. Now, I can tell you because I was there, basically these guys were just jumping in and the dogs were so excited they were barking like crazy, which I guess is why the guy's covering his ears. But if I didn't tell you any of that, you'll probably figure it out, but you'll be looking at this photo for a little bit longer trying to understand what's going on.
Now, one might assume that we should always go for great photos because they tell a better story and because there's more to them than simple aesthetics. However, I don't really agree with that because I think there's room for both good and great photos. As a matter of fact, I think you can have one great photo that's supported by two or three good photos in an album or in a photo set from a day. Because sometimes you don't want any strings attached. Sometimes you just want a nice aesthetic image of something obvious, of something simple, and you have no questions after looking at that image. You just look at it you're like, yeah, this is really nice, I like it, and then you move on. There's nothing wrong with that. Equally, there is nothing wrong with having an image that makes you think, makes you ask questions, and then makes you uh, ponder what, what you've been looking at. So my advice is just to go for both types of photos and don't worry too much about only going for images or scenes that have a story or have more to them than meets the eye. Okay, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you have any questions, if you agree or disagree with how I've worded this, please write it down in the comments below. If you have your own examples of what you would consider a good or a great photo, again, please write that down below. But for now, I'm going to leave you to it. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. Again, if you want a great VPN, use code RomanFox and get three months off Surfshark for free. Link it down below. And that's it. Thank you again, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.